All right, I'll post a link uh, in the description to a video where a guy's showing this awesome method um, where we take our template, attach it to the side of the the, pro, the trailer here, and we're gonna mark our our uh, vertical spars and use that template to then go and and cut those spars so that'll give us hopefully spars to match the the uh, walls and we'll go uh, cut those and try to frame them in uh, frame them in place so we'll show more of that too I nearly messed up with uh, making my spars already um, <clears throat> I put this in here measured a quarter inch offset to account for the hurricane hinge fitting in here um, I shouldn't have done that so I transferred this line out here quarter inch off instead what I did is mark this up turn it around put my line down here and that should be the right spot because what's gonna happen is um, my hurricane hinge is gonna sit on a 3 8 flat bar here to bring it above my trim then it's also uh, I want this all to come out one quarter inch I'll just move it out a quarter inch so then that way my seal my galley seal that's gonna run along here and my my T molding that'll be on the hatch will have space to sit on the seal and compress it so if I use that if I use that one quarter inch out line um, <clears throat> my flat bar would have pulled this up but not pushed this out at all so my team holding would have been flush right along right along this so that wouldn't have worked all right clamped our template down this is our mark where we start tracing and we've got three quarter inch ply under there and this goes all the way down to the outside of the quarter inch on the outside <clears throat> but you can see this is this is where our actual floor is, so if this is getting lifted up 3 eighths, uh, we're probably going to have to trim this back a tiny bit more so it contacts the floor properly, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll cut this out and dry fit it, and if i got to remove material, I'll do it then. Alright, so we have our first spar. <clears throat> to make sure it was 2 inches, we just ran a pencil along this guy, jigsawed it out, gave it a quick sanding, and... We could probably get two and then maybe a third <clears throat> a third spar out of that one piece of wood and uh, we'll just keep making spars and start putting the hatch together soon all right so it took a while but we've got one two three five six spars uh, we're gonna take two glue them together, have two in the middle, and then another two uh, laminated on the other side. So we'll have uh, strong outer edges here. We don't have any way to clamp something that's over four feet. So we put our vertical spar here, horizontal spar there, clamp them to the trailer wall. And uh, now we can do some pre-drilling, and that should work. <laughs> should work well for us. A little bit of a workaround. All right. So there's our outline of our hatch, secured in place. It's got uh, eight times strength PL, and uh, we we ended up using deck screws. We tried tried pocket holing this and it did not work <clears throat> the pocket holes uh, the pocket holes uh, didn't hold we probably just needed longer screws but we decided we're just gonna we're just gonna take um, deck screws and go in like this so we've clamped it up it's flush on this side it's nice and square and we've got our uh, enough of a gap here that we have just about a quarter inch on either side um, it's actually more like uh, three-eighths at the bottom just because the way this kind of feathers out a bit 
and at the top we get our one quarter on either side and uh, we're pretty happy with that so we'll let it dry and see what it looks like all right so what we have here is our hatch um these are all the spars and ribs and uh, so we did two in the middle did three and then just two uh, horizontal ones in the middle the reason we did that is um, we were having issues with the pocket holes and they weren't quite strong enough it seemed so we went overkill and we put three inch deck screws through these things so this should be extremely solid um, glued up and we're going to clamp it in place um, I don't think it really needs much clamping it didn't get knocked out of out of alignment or anything but we'll do it just in case so tomorrow we'll put the luon on it Okay. So lift this up, and then, yep. and then you go on over there and line her up. Till it's uh, flush. Oh, it's over flush. Over flush? Yeah. A um, little like. Just push on it. If you okay, just push on it's the. Flush. It's flush? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, in theory. Wow. I think we got it this time. Try this. I'm gonna put that there <clears throat> and see if it can clear it. There you go. Yep, that worked. <gasps> Perfect. And then, uh, <laughs> you just let it go or what? Uh, whatever. I just put, I just leave my hand on it. Okay, I'll leave it. <laughs> Little tall, hey? For me, but who cares? So we did this using a calculator off tnttt.com and uh, didn't have to screw uh, a whole bunch of holes in the galley. But we totally messed up the hatch part of it, so uh, yeah, there's lots of holes. <laughs> yeah, the calculator told us to to do this uh, with a seven inch, about seven inches from the uh, the uh, hinge point there, and then we went way out of left field and put it too high where it wouldn't actually close because it would come down to here and uh, bind up and yeah, it gets stuck because of the radius of this turning met the radius of that so we thought let's put it somewhere in the middle it'll have a good weight and it'll clear that radius and now it's finally working but uh we're not we're not sure why we couldn't get um 
gas springs the right size that they were calling for and tried to fudge the numbers with 27 inch springs um, and maybe because we have a really um, straight hatch it's not fully curved maybe that screws our center of gravity up a bit and we measured it wrong uh, the weight of it wrong I don't really know at this point I'm just happy to be done. <laughs> so we'll fill up those holes or we'll just tell their story uh, forevermore.